I never really thought I'd be making a gargoyle out of clay, but here we go. The challenge this week is to make a gargoyle. So we're gonna be coil building this gargoyle and they used a red clay. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my red stoneware that I have. This clay is from Carl Yiga. The clay is called 4SF. It's got just a little bit of grog in it and this is the same red clay that I've used in all these other projects that you've seen. It's really good for coil building larger pieces because of that grog content, but it's still quite smooth. I really like this clay, but any slightly grogged stoneware or earthenware would work for this project. I sketched out the gargoyle that I wanna make and he looks a little bit like a teddy bear in this sketch. I'm hoping that it's not going to look quite like this exactly. Maybe a little bit more gargoyly. <laughs> But the main thing with this piece is I want to add a lot of texture. So there's going to be a lot of carving. There's going to be a lot of stamping. Um, that's really what I'm going to be excited about because if you saw the episode, they also added a black stain to really pull out those textures. So I really want to capitalize on that. They got five and a half hours to complete this project. So we're going to be timing ourselves and let's just get started. As usual with these coil building projects, I'm going to start by extruding a bunch of coils and that means I can use them to build my forms and all the coils will be nice and uniform. It's just gonna save me a lot of time, but you can also roll out coils too. I'm just gonna zip through this part though because you've seen me making coils with my extruder tons of time, so you don't need to see that part again. So my plan is to freestyle this. I'm certain that it would be better if I made some templates or planned this out in any way. But to be honest, I just want to do it and see how it goes. I think it'll be more fun. So what I do need to do is construct the different parts in different stages and then assemble them after they've hardened up. So I will build the body, the arms separate and the legs separate and the tail separate and his horns separately. I think that's all the different parts that I need. Oh no, the head separate too, nine different parts. And instead of measuring and doing all the proportions and, and all that stuff like I normally do, we're just gonna freestyle it and see how it goes. Yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do is build the body first, and then I can kind of measure everything against the body to keep it all proportional. So one thing I'm changing about the brief is that I'm not going to build this on a like triangle roof tile because I'm not trying to make something just for the experiment and just for filming that I'm not actually going to, you know, use as much as you can use a sculpture. I want this to be 50% <laughs> gargoyle and 50% garden gnome. <laughs> this is my plan. Um, it's also not maybe gonna be as scary as some of the others in the show, but um, this is what I wanna make and I'm just gonna trust my gut with that. What I want to do is give him a nice belly. I always, always build coils with templates. Like you've seen me do that a hundred times. So it's gonna be interesting to just free, freehand it. So our torso is like halfway done. We need to start making the neck at 20 centimeters. We're at 14 right now. But what I want to do now is start attaching the legs because I feel like 
the more stuff I attach now, the better it is because not only will things dry, but also it's going to change like the balance of the piece. So as it's tall enough to attach the legs, I'm going to start just going ahead and doing that. And so I made these guys They're basically the same as the arms, um, more or less the same size. But what I do need to do is carve into this because I shouldn't keep it all completely round. I need to kind of smush it up against this. So they're kind of like tighter against it. You see how there's like some space here. What I think I'm gonna do is just kind of like eyeball it, kind of something like this. And because the clay's still wet, I can still like squish it a little bit. I'm just gonna cut out this here. That's looking pretty good. It's pretty tight against, as you can see, I can always like push, I mean, both are still quite flexible. So I can push one in, push the other out, just so that they can meet each other. I am gonna reinforce it with a coil as well though, just for extra security. But I wanna get these on because I'm thinking, I actually think these need a bit more sculpting. Like, what kind of, I need to decide what kind of foot give him. Like originally I was going to do more like a human style foot, but as I'm looking at it, maybe it would be cool if he had like hooves. Be definitely creepier if he had some hooves and it's kind of like the shape that it's naturally becoming. But let me just attach them and um, then I can think about it. Or I'll think about it as I'm attaching them because yeah. I'm happy with these. We're gonna cut a little notch in them later, give them some texture, but um, gonna be hooves. So I'll just continue working my way up. So we are getting to a spontaneous changes time in the build. As I mentioned, I'm restricted with my kiln size. So this little guy can't be any taller than 35 centimeters, which is here. Okay, so that's, that's our limit. And originally I planned on putting these guys on top. Like, I don't know exactly how, but like somehow like kind of like Devil, devil horns. Honestly, it's starting to look a bit like a Pokemon, <laughs> which I'm, I'd like Pokemon, but I'm not really going for that. Um, I still need to add a lot of features though. So I think that that's gonna hopefully go away at some point, but I can't add these because this is gonna be way too tall. 
This is this is way way not going to fit into the kiln. So I'm not sure. I could repurpose these as arms. I'm not sure. Yeah, the form is like starting to get away from me. He's like a bit thick. Like his his shoulder blades are a little bit massive. So anyway, I had a new idea though. I think it would be. I mean, this is making him a bit cuter, but I would love to give him some like long floppy goat ears because you know the goat is the devil, right? <laughs> And I love goats. <laughs> so um, like those can droop down. So his ears can be down here. And then I'm thinking more like human nose or should it be like a snout? I haven't fully figured that out yet, but I do think that I can do that tomorrow because I think that this whole thing should firm up. He's starting to sag a little. I keep like battling against. That's why his shoulder blades are popping out. He's just starting to sag. Um, in the past, when I've been hand building uh, and filming it for you guys, I usually do the build over like many days, like two weeks sometimes, so that it can firm up and you don't have any sagging issues. But um, this time I'm following the brief and I'm doing it this way, but um, they did have a break where they would add the details later. So I'm probably gonna do that. I'm just gonna close up his head. And uh, I don't know if I should add the arms. I think I'm gonna wait to add the arms. I think this guy needs to firm up even to add the arms. And also I have no idea how I'm going to add the arms. Like obviously cutting some away or should they be up? Then he looks a bit more like a Pokemon. Although it's kind of cute. <laughs> Let's see, I can always remake the arms and do them later if it's getting too dry. I think uh, close the head and let it dry out a bit and it's getting kind of long anyway. I've been working at this for three hours because I have two and a half left. So I'm pretty pooped. So yeah, I'm just gonna finish the hat. I'll turn it upside down tomorrow and like smooth out these coils from the inside. But for now, ooh, he's just like losing his shape. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna do for now because as I'm pushing it, trying to blend it in, I'm squishing the head and I don't wanna do that anymore. He's getting too oblong. So here's where we at. Let's call it a day. Here's the time. Two hours and 40 minutes left, which this might be the first time that I'm actually crunched for time. Um, we'll see because there's still so much to do. Okay, see you tomorrow. I'll be honest with you guys, it's actually been two days since I last worked on this. Uh, it was a Friday and then on the weekend I was busy with home renovation projects. If you don't know, I'm renovating an old house. Um, at least I'm building a kitchen uh, and doing some nice things. So what I did was I put this towel over to kind of keep the plastic tighter against the gargoyle. So I'm hoping it worked. I haven't looked at this yet, so hopefully he's not too dried out. Yeah, he's okay. I wasn't super worried because it's cold as heck down here. I've got a heater, but I only turn it on when I'm down here. So it was cold over the weekend and he was wrapped up and yeah, it's a basement. So things are pretty wet down here. So he's needing some work. We need to deal with this cone head situation. And I do want to refine the body a little bit. I'm not super happy with the shape of the body right now. Uh, let's see. And the head needs more things going on to it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just start shaping it, I guess. And then I have my random limbs that I need to choose from. I've got my poop, <laughs> poop horns. And I've got, these were meant to be the arms. 
We'll see. We'll see. But I need to I need to just get some like bearing on what this is all supposed to look like because it's just it's just a mess right now. What I need to do is flip this guy actually so I can smooth from the inside. So hopefully I'm not gonna smush him. I'm a baby. With coils, I typically find it important to smooth from both sides. I mean, there's exceptions like this when you really want to keep that coil shape, but if you don't want to keep the coil shape, you might as well smooth from both sides so that it's less likely to crack. Something's like wrong with his neck, I feel. I don't know what it is. What is, why is his neck looking so weird? Do we want to smooth out all this rough texture or do we want to shave it? Why do I feel like he's gonna crack on his neck? Here's what he's looking like so far. So, hooves, goat ears. What about some sort of snout? I just need to like change this head somehow because the head is way too round. Like this is why he's looking like a Pokemon, I think. So I'm gonna try and add like some sort of snout to him and see how that, how that works. Let's just start adding things. It looks super freaky right now and weird, but I'm hoping when I add the texture, it's going to make sense. I'm just gonna trust the process. I'm gonna add the arms and uh, hope that the texture helps. My biggest issue is that we have some very thick parts and very thin parts. So these arms are probably the thickest part. They're like an inch thick, like thick. And I thought about hollowing them out. I didn't find a way that would make sense. So we have an inch thick, which is two and a half centimeters versus a half centimeter. So a two centimeter thickness difference. So this baby is going to need to dry really, really slow. And I'm especially going to need to protect the ears from drying out. 
Cracking is a serious possibility. So I think what I'm going to do now is I need to finish the legs. Like the legs are quite dry already because they were, you know, some of the first pieces I made. So I'll finish the um, texture down on the legs and then I'm going to let him dry a little bit um, because the arms are still really fresh. And uh, maybe I'll just put it in front of the fan or something, although that's risky with the ears. Let's see, I'm going to finish the legs, let it dry out a little bit, and then add the texture to the arms in any places that the texture is currently missing. I need to finish this eye because um, it was too wet to fully carve out before. This, this eye is the eye, like this is how it's going to look, like completely all the way through. Yeah, but it's starting to look like something, right? <laughs> Well guys, I think I'm done. Um, we have nine minutes. <laughs> so that was by far the closest, that was by far the closest that I've ever gotten to uh, rushing, uh, but we're gonna be okay. Nine minutes, I, it's pretty much done. It is done. So a few things. I'm going to let it dry extremely slowly. So tonight I'm gonna to wrap it in plastic. I'll probably leave it under plastic for a few days and then slowly transition into take off the plastic and put on cloth so it can start to dry. And yeah, basically I'll probably dry it out over the course of like two weeks. Uh, so it's gonna be a while before you guys see this video. <laughs> um, is it scary? What do you think? I think it's pretty scary. It's definitely the weirdest thing that I've ever made. <laughs> and this guy definitely came from my heart. Um, all of these pieces of the creature are, I don't know, they're animals that I love or shapes or features that I love. So I'm kind of obsessed with this tail. This tail was inspired by a donkey tail. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with it. <laughs> so here's my little, um, goat creature. So what they did on the show, which is a little bit strange in my opinion, is that they final fired it and then they used a stain to give it a wash for the judging. That doesn't make any sense to me because then the stain could easily wash off, like especially if you're gonna put it on a roof, like their concept was. Obviously they're gonna be in galleries, but whatever. I'm going to actually bisque mine because I do want to be able to make the stain last. I am planning on putting this in my garden. So I'm going to bisque it and then do a stain wash to bring out that texture and then I'll final fire it. So I think that it will look really cool and I'm dying to see how it turns out. I will be shocked, shocked, shocked beyond belief if there's not like some major cracks in this though because I took a lot of risks with thin and thickness all I can do now is dry it slowly. So we'll see you in a couple weeks. Going in for a bisque fire. He survived. I'm thrilled to say that there's not a crack on him. There is um, one thing, 
his tail sort of pulled away from his body and I don't remember doing this, but I see that I never actually attached it. So that makes sense. This part is thinner, so it shrunk faster and kind of pulled away. And then like it was already doing this when it was just drying out before the kiln. But um, as long as I'm careful with this when I'm glazing it, I think it's gonna be fine. He's looking cool. So what I definitely need to do is sand him a little bit. Like obviously I wanted the rough texture, but you can see like the pieces are like literally falling off of him. So I'm gonna sand it a little bit and then give it that wash. I'll do an iron oxide wash and pop him back in the kiln for the final fire. So what I have to do is somehow wet sand this. Um, <laughs> And I was thinking I could put it into like a tub or something with water, but I might just use a spray bottle. Like you want a wet sand so you're not creating a bunch of dust for you to inhale. But um, I'm trying to figure out the easiest way to do this. I'm gonna just try spraying him and we see, we see how it goes. Doesn't need to be too much sanding. You guys have asked me before what grit sandpaper that I'm using. And I'm pretty much always using this 240 grit sandpaper. I don't, you know, use a heavier grit and go finer, finer. I just use one, but it just depends on what you're doing. Like if you're really trying to make it super, super smooth, then you might want to, you know, use these sandpapers progressively. Um, I've especially heard of people doing that when the piece is final fired and they're sanding the bottom and they want to make it like really buttery smooth. I just use this because I don't know, I think it's fine, <laughs> but um, something you can do if you want to make it really, really smooth, start with a slightly heavier grit and then go finer, finer. So I'm going to try this and see how it works. Yeah, I think this is the way to go, but it's going to be a little messy. Next, to get any extra dust off, I ended up putting him in a tub and elevating him with a turntable so that I can pour water over him and kind of wash off all that extra dust. Even though I'm not applying any glaze to him and I don't have to worry about the glaze sticking to a dusty surface, I still wanna make sure that he's pretty clean so I can apply the iron oxide to a clean surface. You can see a lot of dust came off here. Okay, now I can go ahead and apply the iron wash. Let me just get my turntable. So I have my black iron oxide and I got this from Cardiga. You guys ask me a lot where I get my supplies and my recommendation is get your supplies from a local supplier. I actually have a bunch of links in my description that uh, I have suppliers of similar products from all over the world. Um, if you're in Germany, however, though, I buy all my stuff from Kayega. And uh, this is a black iron oxide is what it's called. It's just a powder. It's a raw material. And we're going to mix it with water to make a black iron oxide wash. So whenever you are using raw powders, you want to be wearing a mask. So, let's go. So I just used a scoop of iron oxide and filled the rest of my container up with water. And I'm gonna mix it up. Once the iron oxide is completely covered in water, that's the time that you can take off your mask. Finally got some new brushes. So I have to say, this may have been too much iron oxide. Um, I know that it's not as strong as cobalt, or at least that's what I've been told. Um, so I used a bit more, but I've never used black iron oxide for a wash. I've only done cobalt before. So we will see how this goes, but um, what I can do is sponge it back as well. So maybe I get my sponge ready. So the idea is to cover it and then sponge it back. Start in the back just in case. Oh, looks okay. Mm, let's see.
this clay, I know it looks quite bright uh, red right now, but it does fire quite dark. But I think that that's gonna be really cool because then there's going to be a more subtle difference between the black and the clay. So it's really gonna look like a texture. I think this is, this is what we wanted. I think this is right. Okay, that was a very messy process, but um, I think he looks so cool with this like added depth to him. So what I'm going to do now, I'm not gonna put this straight into the kiln because he's definitely very wet at this point. Um, yeah, I don't wanna risk any cracking. So I'm gonna let him dry out for a couple days and then we'll pop him in the kiln. And I'm very excited to see the results. right? I am slightly obsessed with him. I think he's so cool. <laughs> a little garden gnome for us. A little protector, protector of the garden. <laughs> At this moment, I see zero cracks. Oh, there's some cracks on the inside, but they don't go outside. His tail did pull away even more, so it's quite separate. I don't know if I can show this to you. Let's go put him outside where he belongs. Hmm? 